All right. So say again, 57? On uh, 2.0. See, I can remember that. Let it go, Jeff. Let it go. Uh, yeah, this is where uh, some of the questions can get interesting. Oh. All right. Uh, this is a good example of that. Three. Okay, okay. All right. So, guys, this is section 28. This is page 165, number 57. Uh, this is one about even and odd, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, recall. F of negative x equals f of x. It's even. Yeah, f of negative x equals negative f of x. It's odd. And they ask you to prove that the derivative of an even function is an odd function and then vice versa for the other one. So part A says prove if f of x is even, then f prime of x is odd. And at 2a, we don't know any shortcuts yet. We do know the shortcut way to write the derivative. And just real quick, who remembers what's the other way to write the D derivative? D over DX. Yeah, so d by dx. You can write it like that. Cool. Or you can write dy dx. Cool. This is actually called an operator. Can you do it that one? I don't even know that yet. Just to throw it out there. Um, so at this point, all you know about derivatives, calculating derivatives, is the limit, the, de the definition of derivative, using the limit. So when you see this kind of problem, uh, so prove, given that f of x is even, so we know f of x is even, so what do we know is true about f of x? F of negative x. Yeah, all we know is f of negative x equals f of x, so we know this. And now I need to show that its derivative is odd, so... What do you think I should do next? Yes? Can you like make up a function and prove it? No, that's too specific. Because okay. then it's true for that function. This has to be true for every even function that exists. Yeah. <coughs> so would you be f prime of negative x? Well, how would you well, see, there's no connection there, is there? I can't just say f prime because it has to be connected to to f, and the only thing we know so far is what is f prime and by 2.8. All we know for f prime is one of two things: either the limit h goes to zero. All we know are these two things, right? Or f prime is the limit, x goes to a. I'll give you this hint. One of those is better to use. Is it normal? I don't know. I don't know. We'll go to. I don't know. But which side will we choose? What do you mean? Which side? Like on right under the known, the f of negative x equals the f of x. Which one? Right. We know this is true. We know that f of negative x equals f of x. We know that's true. We know that the function does this. Right. Now we want to know what does the derivative of the function do? Well, I mean, we have to get somewhere where we get that, and then we plug in the negative x, and then it equals the odd function, but. So, so for example, uh, where is the derivative function up here? Where is it? It's up there. Where is it? There's two of them, right? There's yeah. a bam, bam. Both. This is the derivative function. It is. This is like work to do here, but this is the definition of the derivative. There it is. 
So how do I test to see what kind of symmetry it has? Plug in, Plug in negative x. Oh. All right, that's enough. That's all I'm going to say. There's a little bit more work, and there's a little bit of a understanding what happens after that, but the, I, that's all I'm going to say. Because it looks like most of us haven't tried the problem out yet. So, go on, see. Try it. There's a little bit of... Does that help or no? <laughs> yeah, have you tried what I just said yet? Has any of you tried what I just said yet? Have you tried it? I just sound like staring at it trying to figure out what to do. Say again? Sometimes Web Assign doesn't give me the options for everything, so. Yeah. So you might have. Uh, alright, alright. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they just have to pick another one that's equally freaky. Because they don't give me every single problem as an option. I don't know why. So you just plug in X, right? And negative, negative X. Yeah. Some of you guys, yeah, you got to actually try it to see what happens. And then if it's right, maybe. So if you haven't tried it yet, then try it. Plug a negative X in, see what happens. Wait, so I understand what happened when I did it for the even, but I don't understand what the difference is when I do it for the odd. There's no odd. I don't understand. What's the only function? All I know is F is even. And what's F prime made of? What's F prime made of? Uh, F, right? Isn't F prime made of F? Yes. Isn't that weird to say? But what's F prime equals stuff to do with? F. Okay. All right. So just try it. You gotta just try it. This is one of those you just gotta play with it, right? Or or not. It's up to you. You get more or less out of this class. It's up to you. Um. And then part B is the same way. Yeah. You look very dissatisfied, but bring it up again later. I want to give you guys time to try it. Yeah. Um, can we do 44? Uh, 2.8. Oh, yeah, 44 is a little freaky. Um, so when we were doing the sketching of the curves, right, and we can do some more of those today. Um, let me see. 44... Someday. Anybody else have a question on homework? We're waiting for that to wake up. That was it. All right. I'll do one more. Oh yeah, 3-1? Yeah. What's, what you got? Oh, you got some over there too, right? 24. 24? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We'll do that one here in a sec. I think it's A. There we go. All right, here's 44. All right. So please, dear God, don't turn graphs in like this. You know, give each, each function its own graph. I love when students say, number 1 through 10 is all on this graph. Holy shit. Spaghetti without the meatball. Uh, so they give you, they, A, B, C, D, one of them is F, one of them is F prime, the first derivative. What's F double prime? Second, Second derivative. So I really want you to understand, when you do F prime, you have created a new function. And what can you do to any function? Take its derivative. I'm not saying that it will exist. I can say, I say you can attack it with the derivative. So F prime is its own function. So I can take its derivative, and it kind of makes sense. That means I've double primed it, right? And then triple prime would mean the third derivative. So if this was position, if f is position, f prime, velocity, velocity f double prime, so, so, f triple prime, concavity, no, f no. triple prime. So you got uh, position, and when your position changes, that's you're moving with a certain speed. That's velocity. When your velocity changes, it's acceleration. And here, you ready? Uh, triple derivative. The derivative of acceleration is known as jerk. So that pretty much describes my first car. <laughs> right? It's actually called the jerk because that's what we physically feel when our acceleration changes. Alright, All right, thank you. So, what, when, when we were sketching the curve, what was the first thing to look for? Zero. Or, zero. zero where the function does what? 
Yeah, so where the function has like a max or a min, or even just a place where it rests for a second. Let me make sure you guys are with me. So, when you're looking at these, the red, the blue, this is actually green, blue, green, and the black line. You look for your sample, look, there's a minimum position. And, and what's this green line doing at that position? Zero. zero. So I know that, it look, and then it's just double check. There's another place where it's zero. What kind of slope is this? Positive. And see the green line, isn't it positive? And this is where your brain rebels. I'm looking at how this is moving and where this is. This is moving up, so it's positive slope. The values of the green line are positive. Our brain goes, but the green line's going down. No, the green line's values are positive, which means corresponding. So that means the green line is how related to the black line. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. The green line is the derivative of the black line. Now, I don't know where in this, like if this is F prime and this is going to be F double prime. Guess with, I know that the green looks to be the derivative of the black. Do you guys, and do you guys see how I got there? I got there a very easy way. The way that we start with any graphs of derivatives, where does it go to zero? And then the right thing would go to zero in that place, where the slope go to zero. And then the, so let's see, what about something else? Look, this goes, what happens here? Goes zero. Goes to zero, and, and there's everything is zero there, right? <laughs> so that looks to be a good place to try something. And this slope is negative. negative, so maybe this guy, see how this, this is all negative values? Mm -hmm. All right, all right, I'm just trying to give you the tools. What are you looking for for this? This is really weird shit, so don't, you know, give yourself a little, uh, do give yourself some leeway, all right? And I'm not going to expect you to totally get this help. It's been a while, and I sit down, I'm like, okay, you gotta, you got to keep your brain straight, because your brain's like, no, yes, brain. You just got to... <laughs> what are we doing tonight, Brian? Yes. I was just getting confused because I know we're talking about like positive slope and then positive values. Um, I'm just confused on like how to draw the graph. Are you drawing the graph based on the value? Or All right, let's do this. Yes, you are. I'm not going to expect you to calculate the slope at a bunch of points, but you could actually do that. We sort of did that when we first yeah. did it. I tried a little bit, but all I really care about is the shape. Great. Uh, but you are, I mean, you see how, go back to the uh, green line and the black line, right? Wait, I think that's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the black line here is really, really steep. So positive, so I want a very high positive value on its derivative. And then as it comes up here, it's less and less, so the values are getting smaller and smaller. That's all I really care about. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, do you see the scale on this? Yeah. There is no scale. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Maybe, maybe. So I, I, chapter two, uh, the first part of chapter two is where we're very technical with the secant lines and looking for this. The, now this is a little more conceptual. This is less specific. You don't have to calculate the slopes when you do this. So let, let's, uh, you guys have enough to at least ha attack this problem? Yes, ma'am? How would you explain your choices? How do you mean? It says up there, explain your choices. Oh, so you would say, uh, you would say uh, the black line uh, has a flat tangent at the same place where the green and goes to zero. You'd say those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just tell me what made you make your choices. That's all. Yes? How would you know the order? How would you um, well, that's the thing. Uh, now you start to look at, uh, you know, so now you look at maybe, I don't know, this here. So it's got negative uh, value. Well, let's go this way. It's got positive slope. So you can see a couple things are positive up there, right? And then it goes, what, what kind of slope does it have right there? Zero. zero. So a lot of everything goes through zero. That's not very good. Just about everything. And then it's got positive slope again. So it's positive on both sides. What's the only image up there that does all that together? Yeah, this red problem, right? Now, now go with me. That was the blue and the red, right? Yes. All right, so we got a relationship between the black and the green. We got a relationship between the blue and the red. Now I just got to get one more relationship between, and then I got them all. Maybe so. 
I want to give. I don't want to finish the problem. I don't want to give you guys a chance to look at it. Yes. So, can I say D can be F because I noticed that uh, it's going odd to even. So when the odd go to an even function, then the even goes back to an odd. I like it. So you can use that fact, like what we just talked about, right? It's good to know. Plus, we talked about how the derivative of x cubed would be basically x squared, right? It would be really, it would be 3x squared. All right, so we'll go over that again here in a minute. You see that? So actually, if you look at it that way, this, this problem becomes stupid easy. Because uh, there's a cubic, right? Yeah. And there's a squared. Well, not, not cubic. Here's a cubic here, right? That's a cubic, that's a squared. This looks like it might be a cubic, but it could also be a fifth power or something. You never know, right? And then this bad boy is weird. Looks like an x. That's like an x. Four. 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 Yeah, or x to the six or some, some even power like that, right? In fact, it looks really flat here compared to this guy, so I'll bet you it's a higher power. But it, it's even, so the derivative of the even would be odd, so you know the green would have to go to the black or the blue. All right, all right. So you can, you can tie that in, too. I was trying to see if you could do it without that, but you guys brought that up. Sure, you could do it with that, too. So that'll make it a little bit easier. You guys are like, did he just say he was trying to make this problem hard? <laughs> sort of, yes. I wanted you to get the answer in different ways, but you can use that, too. Sure, since you brought it up. But you should really be able to just tease it out by what is zero where it's supposed to be compared to where the other guy goes flat, stuff like that. You, should, you could actually do this whole problem through, and where is, is it positive where the other guy is increasing? You should be able to do this whole problem just using that idea. So let's do this. Uh, somebody else had a, did you have more in 3-1? Yeah. Um, yeah, or uh, 24. Oh, okay. So, no, oh, 3 1. 3 1. I'm on the way back in 28. 24. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do this in a second. Let's remind, I want to remind everybody the rule that we learned. All right. Anybody else? Yes? 60 and 3 1. I'm almost certain we're going to come back to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a yummy. This is a yummy problem. Mm. I'm almost certain nobody else has tried that yet, or very few. So maybe I'll say something about that. Just remind me. I got to get back. All right, let's do this. Let's do one problem where we sketch the curve, sketch the slope function, right? You with me? Uh, and you're going to have to rely on my beautiful drawing. Uh, the nice thing, it doesn't have to be specific, right? The scale can be very general. Um, Maybe we'll do two. We'll do two examples. Man. The dude is dead. We learned the derivative, and then we learned the inside derivative. Because you learned addition, and then you must learn subtraction, so that you're able to solve equations with addition in it. Uh, so when we start going the other way, well, they'll give us a prime, and then we got to work our way back to S. That'll be the other way. That'll be interesting. Um, but what's important, if I want to draw F prime, I've got to continuously continuously remind myself that I'm looking, I'm going to draw the values, I'm going to put my pen where the values of the slope are. So what's important back here? Slope is negative. Slope is negative, right? Yeah. Therefore, I want to draw here. And what's happening to the slope as I get closer to this point? Less and less negative until it gets to zero. So a really good place to start as always. Let's plot the zeros, and of course here, plop. And you can also bring it in the back of your mind, you know that this looks like a cubic, so the answer should look like 
It's quite a parable. Oh, yeah. I said it to my students this morning. I'm a math 90 L. And they're like, does he think it's pronounced that way? <laughs> like, yeah, sure, I do. Uh, all right, so it's negative slope. So it starts off really negative, and then it's less and less negative. It's kind of starting to turn around. So like the economy is not decreasing. <laughs> it's not decreasing as fast as it was, but it's still decreasing. Oh, shit. All right, so it goes up. And I know, so, so it's getting less and less negative until it hits zero. And now what happens to the... It switches to switches the positive. Switches the positive, good. And what's in between these two places here? Because it's got to get back to here. It's getting bigger and bigger positive here, right? But then somewhere here, it starts to get less and less positive. So somewhere right in the middle is that thing, I think I called it the inflection point already. So that's in our future. When we deal with concavity, that'll come back up. Right? So right about, looks to be right about, actually it looks to be right on there. Should be its highest point right about there. And then, of course, after it hits zero here, it becomes negative and gets really big negative. So there's a visual, not a proof, but a visual demonstration of a cubic becoming a parabola. Why is it a down parabola? Because this is a negative. negative. So this is like negative x cubed. So this has got to be like negative x squared. And negative 3x squared would be more precise, roughly. So you just got to continuously remind yourself what the hell you're doing or else your brain is going to hijack your arm and you're going to do all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> so everywhere you go, wherever you are, say to yourself, I'm up here, so that must mean the slope is positive. Just keep double checking yourself. I'm down there, so that must mean the slope is negative. Okay, good, that looks good. Just keep checking. All right. Now, let me remind you of the shortcut we finally learned. So many guys are like... Thank the gods. So in general, this is kind of nifty. If f of x equals x to the n, f prime of x equals n prime of x. Yeah, the n comes down, and then this goes down by 1. On the handout, I'm going to give you guys in a minute, I've actually got a little bit of a proof. And we sort of went over it last time as to why this works. So if you weren't here last time, it's a really good video to look at. So let me, let, let's just do a couple examples and I'm going to let you loose on this thing and then we'll see if there's still a question about the homework. Um, I'll start off nice. What's that prime there? That's crazy. What about here? Yeah. Is it pretty cool there? I want to make sure I didn't want to fly by there. So the two comes down. Whatever is there already gets multiplied by because it, it ends up multiplying. So 2 times 6 is 12, and the power goes down by 1. <coughs> what about, what's the, I like this, you ready? Right. Zero. Why? Zero. I love it, two reasons. How many x's are there? Zero. So it's x to the 0. So the 0 comes down and kills it. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. It's not even the better way to look at it. The better way to look at it is, what would that look like visually? That would look like a flat line. What's its slope? Zero. So remind yourself, what is f prime? What's the derivative of something represented? Represents slope. its slope. Bam, bam, bam. Yes, sir. So the derivative gets a little uh, prime. Dude. What is like the antiderivative? Normally, it becomes a capital F. Yeah. When you underive this, it becomes capital F. That's in our future. Don't worry. Or sometimes you just write antiderivative of this, and the prime goes away. So the antiderivative kills the primes. Yeah. Right? Uh, prime aside, I don't know. All right. So what about this here? Uh, so that becomes uh, x negative x one over all right, let me give you a clue. Uh, we need to first, and be very careful. Now look, I'm about to rewrite this just a little bit, both of those, so don't put a prime yet. You guys really confuse yourselves when you just automatically put a prime. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit so I can attack it with the rule. The rule only works on things like that. So what's what's wrong with that then? That's not looking like the rule. There's two things that are wrong. How should I, yeah, I agree, you x to the 1 half, but there's a 2 in there too. So you have to do root 2 x to the 
Yeah, you want to split those up because then the rule can attack this. We'll stop there for a second. Some of you guys know something called the chain rule. We don't know it yet officially, so just hold on to that for a while. I can only use what we know, and we don't know that yet. And, he comes in with four X and then this is what now? We're gonna get almost. So then F prime. Whatever. It's gonna be a uh, one over X, negative one over X. Wait a minute, what's happening? No, it's just one over. I mean, one, one what over. What happens X. to this? <laughs> it what's the rule? It becomes negative one half. One half comes down. Yeah. It becomes X to the negative one half. Beautiful, and it goes down by one. Stop there for a second. We're not done, obviously, but is that is that all right? Yeah. I'm just using the rule. The rule never changes for powers of variables, right? It's beautiful. Let it be beautiful. <laughs> Poor little thing. Real quick, watch this. What's one minus two? Negative one. Oh. <laughs> all right. Then what happens here? <laughs> Plus twenty-eight. Because it goes down by one. Kick ass. Kick ass. So that was a little bit like one of the problems somebody just asked me. Yeah. You got to split that rat up so you can attack the real part of it that this this rule can can uh, uh, handle. All right. So simplify um, that's what, what would happen to the two things. Oh yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad you said that. So just to simplify this a little bit. Uh, Do I actually take? The of it or no? No, 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 it's just a constant, yeah, so, what's happening? Rad 2 over 2. Yeah, this will be, yeah, exactly, it's rad 2 over 2, and you can leave it like that, it's fine. Or you could do 1 half minus 1 is 2 to the negative 1 half, but then that needs to be rationalized, that's crazy. So if it's just a number, write it in a rad form that looks a little more normal to us than 2 to the 1 half, that looks a little freaky to us. Uh, but leave, leave the variables with a... Uh, Fractional power. All right. And you could put that on the bottom, whatever. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So let's do this. So if you want to, you can work together on this. So the very top is a little history lesson about Leibniz notation and Lagrange's notation. I showed you Newton's notation, notation last time with a dot on the top. You almost only see that in physics and other sciences. Uh, little proof of the power rule, sort of a proof. And then we did the derivative of the sign last time, but there it is again. Okay. Are we in, so we can use the power rule, right? We don't have to totally, dude. Yes. Your day has come. <laughs> <laughs>